Today we're going to talk about malware, why it exists, and how it works. If you're not too knowledgeable about malware already, the first thing that you might be wondering is what is the difference between malware and a virus? So malware is more of a general term for any type of software that is going to perform malicious activities that the end user would not want it to do. Whether this action is something as severe as a root kit or a reverse shell that takes over the entire computer that the hacker has real-time interaction with, or it could be adware, which might either inject itself into the browser to show a user additional advertisements that they otherwise wouldn't see, or it might not even be affecting the end user's computer at all. It might simply be affecting the server that hosts the website the user is going to. And instead of that server displaying the normal advertisements of sponsors who support the business, it's going to show the malware author's advertisements, which might be legitimate ones that they are getting paid to show, or more often than not, it's going to be illegitimate things like scams that don't really provide a real product or service, they just end up taking your money. Now, a virus is a very specific type of malware that has properties similar to a biological virus. A computer virus attaches itself to a host program in a similar way that a regular virus would attach itself to a host cell. And both of these types of viruses are capable of self-replicating. Now, malware, like most other types of programs, is designed with a certain goal in mind. In the early days of computing, malware was typically something mischievous, and it was usually just used to prank people or to be a minor annoyance to someone in some way. But these days, the end goal is to make money off of the victim who ran the malicious application in some way. One of the more common business models for malware is harvesting user data. And it makes sense that the bad guys would follow this model because some of the largest tech companies like Facebook and Google make a good portion of their profits by collecting user data and either selling this to advertisers or using the data that is collected to make more competitive applications that they can sell to people. But these companies like Facebook and Google, they can only legally collect data up to a certain point and collect certain kinds of data. And there's certain kinds of data that they also cannot sell. But for hackers who are using malware, legality isn't even a factor in their business model. So they'll often steal things like login credentials to your bank, your social media accounts, and even your RuneScape account by using keyloggers or intercepting the login forms after you fill them out. So once the malware has captured this login information, it gets sent off to Facebook or RuneScape or your bank, so you're able to log in normally as if nothing is wrong, nothing would really alert a user that this stuff is going on in the background, but then a copy of these login details are sent to a server that the hacker controls, usually called a command and control server. And from here, the hacker could either use the credentials that they stole for further exploitation, like stealing money from your bank or using your Facebook Messenger to send malicious links to your friends who might be more likely to open them and download the malware hosted there since it would appear that these links are coming from you. The hacker just has to be somewhat decent at social engineering to pull this off most of the time. Or the hacker, they might just sell these login credentials to someone on the dark web. Usually they can get a few dollars or more for a social media login, uh, depending on who it belongs to really, obviously if it's a celebrity or someone who's uh, compromised Facebook or Twitter can do more damage, then they might get a higher bidding for that. Uh, but they can get hundreds or even thousands of dollars for selling login details to a bank, because uh, obviously people can go in there and then clear out real money from you. Then there is malware that takes 
a more direct approach to making money off of the victim that ran it. A certain type of malware that falls in this category is called ransomware, which works by encrypting all of the data that the user has on their computer and then demanding a ransom be paid in order for that user to potentially get their data back. So we know that encryption is usually something used by the person who owns the data on the computer, and it's used to prevent the data from being stolen or compromised in the event that someone else is using the computer, or if the computer were to get stolen, the thief may physically have the hard drive in his hand, but he won't be able to get anything useful out of it since all of the data on there is encrypted. The thief won't actually be able to read anything from there. Ransomware takes advantage of this technology by spawning a window, such as this one that you see here. And this window is actually designed in such a way to confuse the user and to induce panic so that they'll freeze and they don't really know what to do. While in the background, the software is encrypting all of your data that is saved to the hard drive. Now, typically it won't encrypt the file system itself. It won't encrypt any of the OS files uh, because as you can see, it's asking for a payment here. So you would still need to be able to go online uh, and buy Bitcoin and then be able to send it to this wallet address that's listed towards the bottom. Um, and newer versions of ransomware, more sophisticated ones, will also check for backups on your system, whether they're a USB attached storage, a network attached storage, um, or even logged in cloud accounts. They can go into those drives and encrypt them as well uh, if you're signed into that cloud service. Now, the encryption is not an instantaneous process. So if you're unfortunate enough to encounter a screen like this, the recommendation is to quickly turn off the computer by removing its power source and then taking out the hard drive. And then you can attempt to recover any data from that drive that hasn't been encrypted. And then you should either, once you've got that data, do a fresh install of your operating system. That's what I would recommend, particularly if you're using Windows, which is usually where you're going to encounter malware. Uh, or you could run a very thorough virus scan of the drive to go ahead and remove the ransomware or any other malware that might have came with it onto your system. Now, another way to categorize malware is active and passive malware. So a passive type of malware is a program which is pre-programmed to do specific things or even act in a more dynamic way depending on the actions of the user. But it is not being remotely controlled in real time by a hacker. So a good example of this is a worm which can self-replicate and even spread to other computers over the local area network or the wide area network uh, over the internet. And it doesn't need to attach itself to another program. It can just do this automatically. And this activity is pre-programmed. So once the worm is executed, uh, it just does its thing. Uh, one example of a worm that compromised a lot of computers is that it would take over the email client on the computer and it would just send a copy of itself to every single contact that you had in your email and then it would infect that computer and then repeat the process, sending out to every single contact that's in their email. And in some cases, like this one, it was able to infect millions of computers before it was able to be neutralized by a patch to the operating system uh, or by updates to antivirus. So an example of an active malware that can be controlled in real time is a reverse shell. So a reverse shell works in a similar way to a regular shell that you might use on your desktop to install packages on a Linux system, or you could manage your files with the command line on any type of operating system. But a reverse shell doesn't spawn a shell on the system that you can see, on the end user system. 
Rather, it spawns a shell on the hacker's computer that gives them this same command line control over the computer remotely. And this can even work over the internet. So the hacker doesn't even have to be on the same LAN as you. They don't have to be in the same country as you or anything like that. And generally, a reverse shell would be used when the hacker wants to explore the exploited computer to see what kind of information there is to gain from it. Or if this is a corporation that's being hacked, it might be used as a pivot point to either take over a server, which the exploited computer will connect to at a later time, or to try to infect other machines, like an executive's machine, to obviously be able to get more valuable information out of that company. And reverse shells are probably the most dangerous type of malware because they are being controlled in real time by a human. So they're much more unpredictable as far as what they might do, and they can do whatever they want. They can download files off of your computer. They can upload and execute more malware to your computer. They can use key loggers to collect login info, or even spy on you through your microphone or webcam. And oftentimes, this type of access will be used for the purposes of extortion. So a hacker using a reverse shell might discover something like nudes of the end user that are saved to their desktop, and then threaten to release those to the public unless the end user either gives the hacker money or does something for them in return, maybe giving them even more nudes. Uh, or the hacker might record a conversation through the microphone or an activity that's going on in the person's room through the user's webcam. And if the end user would prefer that the public not know about that conversation or that activity, uh, the hacker can, of course, use this to blackmail and extort. And blackmail has been around for a long time. And in the modern era, it's taking a new form with malware and reverse shells that are used to collect the sensitive information. So I hope that you guys found this video useful and that it gave you a better understanding of what malware is, how it works, and why it exists. And if you did find it useful, be sure to share it with others so that they can benefit from it as well. Be sure to give the video a like and subscribe with notifications on so that you know when new content is being released.